In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top five tips for teaching children their times tables. I know, I know, you have to recite them up to 12 in a certain amount of time, but is this the best way? Will I say no? Grab a cuppa and let's talk about times tables. Okay, so let's get straight into it, but do stick around to the end where I will be sharing my absolute most favorite tip. <laughs> okay, number one, making sure your children understand addition and subtraction. So this is key. There are lots of children jumping ahead to their times tables when they are not yet very really confident with understanding addition and subtraction. Or they might not have much experience using a variety of mathematical skills. So for example, patterns in calculations, partitioning, finding differences, missing numbers, word problems, doubles, halves, using manipulative pictures to calculate products. Then the first multiplication structure the children should be introduced to is repeated addition. Twenty four. Good boy. Twen twenty eight. Done. Tw Thirty. Thirty what? Thirty four. Oh. So it's twenty eight and four. No, no, no. So tw twenty eight. Let's add four more. So twenty eight. What's after twenty eight? Twenty nine. Twenty two. Twenty nine. Yeah. Oh, 32, well done. Number two, use pictures and manipulatives. Unfortunately, the most common way of learning times tables is by rote learning facts. Now, I'm not saying let's disregard this, but maths is a creative subject. So let's use color, objects, make it visual and kinesthetic. And then that covers a range of learning styles, making it more fun and gives a deeper and more meaningful experience of maths. Number three, look for patterns. Now I love using 100 square splat. I will put the link in below. It's a great tool to have handy. For children to see the numbers and patterns on 100 square just seems to trigger mathematical thinking. And there has been so many times that they have identified patterns that I have never seen before. I know. <laughs> Obviously I love, uh, but even more exciting is that the kids are so happy to be teaching their teacher or their parent something which obviously is great for their confidence and self-esteem. Patterns are a great way to identify how children are thinking. So you know it's really easy to answer a mathematical question with a yes or no answer, but when you find out how a child has worked out a certain question, whether it's right or wrong, you will be surprised to find their hidden genius. <laughs> Number four, find multiplications in real life situations. So by looking for times tables in everyday life, it will help children understand the importance of maths. So for example, uh, arrays, they exist everywhere when you start looking around for them. So they might be in egg boxes, drawer units, picture displays on a wall, my absolute favorite chocolate chunks in a bar. <laughs> um, and they are great for problem solving. So for example, Okay, Reese. how many tomato plants do we one, have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, okay, so there's twelve tomato plants. Luca, if each tomato plant grows five tomatoes, how many tomatoes will we have all together? How many tomatoes do we have? 16. Oh, yeah. I hope we get to 60 tomatoes. That'd be nice. Yeah, but I don't like tomatoes. Number five, little, often, and be consistent. <laughs> a few questions a day is enough as long as it's consistent. It doesn't have to be the bog standard times table test, but to have a few questions around the house or in the classroom, bounce a ball. Two. Four. Good boy. Six. 
brushes, yeah? Eight. Yeah, well done. What's up to eight? Ten. Good boy. Jump like a frog, walk upstairs reciting the multiples with each step you know, sing, paint, whatever the children enjoy. Now, I know many children learn better when they are moving, and believe me, I know mine do not stop. <laughs> and I actually remember I had a few spinners in the class as well. <laughs> so some of them work, learn really well when they are on the move. Okay, that does lead on to my most important tip, and that is, are you ready? To have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're having fun, they are more likely to succeed if they are enjoying themselves. And to be honest, I enjoy teaching math so much more when I make it fun. So grab a puppet. Hello everyone, my name's Mickey. Now I love maths. I sometimes find it a bit tricky, but it doesn't matter because I love maths. Come and join me. I love it. That was Mickey the monkey. <laughs> And I actually have one more point. Pupils with a growth mindset will make better progress than pupils with a fixed mindset. But that's another story for another day. But for now, Niels van Hove has written a great kid's story about growth mindset. And I have a video read by yours truly. <laughs> I will put the link in there. <laughs> If you found this video useful and would like more videos about stress-free learning and healthier ways of educating our children, then please hit the subscribe button somewhere there <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. Bye.